Right, so last time we were looking at uh, equivalence of norms. And uh, I've warned you about the terminology problem with uniformly equivalent and Lipschitz equivalent, depending on which author you're looking at. And that where I say uniformly equivalent, I mean the same thing as Sutherland means by Lipschitz equivalent. And Sutherland's version is slightly more logical. Uh, so I think I might be tempted to move to that. But in any case, we saw that for, well, we pretty much saw that an interesting thing happens when you're dealing with norms, that all the different kinds of equivalents for norms are equivalent. Um, so they give metrics which are equivalent, even only if they give metrics which are uniformly equivalent, or Lipschitz equivalent, um, and so on. And that's the same as the two norms being within constant bounds of each other doesn't mean each is a constant multiple of each other, just that neither is too much bigger than the other. Um, and so our next task was to look at finite dimensional norm spaces. And we're going to see all norms are equivalent on finite dimensional norm spaces, which means that they're all Banach spaces. And then we get all the consequences we discussed last time for that. So let's see. That was a, a bit of the proof we did for the equivalence of norms. I told you a bit about what we were going to be using. Um, we're going to be using the fact that uh, standard Euclidean space, either R to the n or C to the n, with the Euclidean norm, we're going to use that that's complete. We proved that earlier. Um, we'll use the heine borel theorem, or Boltzmann of Astros, whichever we fancy, in the middle of the proof. Uh, and then I reminded you uh, about m-dimensional vector spaces. So you've got a finite dimensional vector space of so dimension m, where m's an integer. Um, I've moved to m instead of n, because otherwise I will forget and take a sequence later. Um, and my sequence will probably have an n in it, and, and I'll get confused. So I will use m for the dimension of the vector space today. And I would reminded you that if you've got an m-dimensional vector space over f, where f is either the reals or the complexes, then it's isomorphic to f to the m in a rather specific way that you get coordinate vectors for each point of your space. So what you should do is you should fix some ordered basis, v1 up to vm, in order at the basis of your vector space, and then you get a very nice isomorphism between your vector space and f to the m, um, where in one direction you are taking coordinate vectors, in the other direction you're using the coordinate vectors to give you back the elements of e. And this is how we're going to prove 3M3.8, along with all the other stuff I've mentioned. So, okay, so here's the proof of 3M3.8. And since I've just noticed that the power to laptop was off, I'm going to pause the recording at this point, and we shall start again, just in case it's got out of sync. <laughs> 